So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that the real believers are those people when any difficulty comes upon them. What do they say? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Yes. And we should always have in our mind, we should always understand that everything in this world is going to come to an end. One day, everything in this world is going to come to an end. So we have to prepare for this. Do you understand? So we should always keep in mind that everything in this world will come to an end. And if we know it's going to come to an end, then something happens, we won't be so sad. We'll feel naturally sad because we're human beings. Let's say, for example, our parents passed away. So we'll feel sad because we love them. We know that, you know, we miss them. But we know in our minds that they have to go one day. If our children go, we'll feel sad. We didn't expect them to go because we thought we were going to live longer than them. But we know that everything's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everybody has to go. Money, something happens with your bank. Something happens with your money. Your gold gets stolen. A watch gets stolen. A laptop gets stolen. You know that this is dunya. Dunya comes and dunya goes. So you're prepared for this. So you should always be prepared mentally. That what happens. And look, anything could go. You understand? Gotcha. You understand the main point? And to have your heart in something so much is not a good thing. It's called like, like your heart is like, it is mutallik with the dunya. Your heart is connected to the dunya so much. It's not good. Do you understand? Gotcha. But what do you mean so much? How do you know if your heart is connected to the world too much? He gives a very exp explanation. He says, hey, look, your, if your heart, meaning your love for something is so much, and that thing is taken away from you, what happens after this? Check. He says here that if you become so sad, so grieved, so worried, so upset, that it makes you distracting and you can't even do what you're supposed to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's say, for example, somebody passes away and you get so sad, so grieved, so worried, you can't perform your farah salah anymore. You don't perform your salah anymore. You stop praying salah. Yes? Let's say, for example, you stop doing the farah. What you're supposed to do, you stop doing this. What do you do? You stop doing this. It makes you so sad, so grieved. Yes? Or... After the initial, like you're busy, so when you pass away, the janazah get busy, but then you stop doing ibadah, ibadah goes down, your dhikr goes down, your tilawah goes down, like for a lot, like it just drops overall, not that one day when you're really busy, but like overall it drops. And this is not mean that you have too much obsession, that that obsession with this thing is not making you so sad, so grieved, that now you can't do what? That now you can't even function properly. This is now you have an incon impermissible connection with, the, with this item. However, if you continue doing what you're supposed to do, let's say for example, when you pass away, Next day, you're feeling very sad, you're crying, you have tears, you feel, you feel, you know, meet that person, you still go for Fajr, you still read your Quran, you still do your things you're supposed to do, you still do your Zikr. That means that it's the form, like, it looks like you have a lot of things, but it's not really stopping you from, that means that the love of Allah is even more because you're still carrying out the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he gives an example of this. Who's the example of this? Yeah, Khubar alayhi wa salam. Why? He became very, very sad. He became very, very sad. Yes, but what happened? Despite his grief, and because he loved his son Yusuf so much, he loved his son so much, and when his son, they thought he, they said that he was killed, and but Yaqub alayhi salatu knew he wasn't killed. That the wolf didn't kill him. He knew that. That was a lie. He became very sad and very grieved. But what happened? None of the fara'id missed. He was a nabi. And none of the fara'id were missed. None of the nawafil, he carried on, carry on doing this. So even though he was sad and he was grieved that his son not being there, end of the day what happened, he was still, he was still carrying on. So that means that this, this connection, even though it seemed to be very, you know, he was very sad, very grieved, but it didn't distract him from his ibad, from his fara'im, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now this is not, you see, this is not, no, it's not mani anil haq. It's not stopping from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is now natural. It's not impermissible. You understand? Can you explain it very nicely?